Trevor and I met, must be about five years ago. As we began many conversations, we started to look also at the corporate histories of data collection, data production, particularly for artificial intelligence. We really started to look at the history of how artificial intelligence systems learned to see the world. And that was really the start of this project almost three years ago. Ask her to bring these things with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow, please. One of the things that this show is about is really exploring what happens when you open up the lid on a technical system and see how humans are being classified and then to think, what does that mean for everyday life? What does that mean for civil society when these systems are deciding for us how you will be classified and how every exchange, every relationship, every step you take is being tracked and understood and interpreted in these ways. Maybe a snack for a brother Bob. We also need a small plastic snake. As an artist, I got really interested in this new genre of images that I started seeing emerging, which were images that are created for computers. Right? And that's, that's a weird thing to think about because historically, images have always been for people. They've required people to look at them in order to interpret them. An image that nobody sees really doesn't exist. She can scoop these things into three red bags and we will go meet her Wednesday at the train station. As an academic studying artificial intelligence, one of the things that I thought was particularly fascinating about just the last decade, just the last 10 years, to see this explosion of images that have been harvested from the internet and used to train computers. Those systems are actually looking at us and making decisions. In some ways, we are being trained by these systems to perform and to present ourselves in certain ways. In this sense, we're very interested in this dynamic between the ways in which people are training machines and machines are training humans. The image that was first published in 2009 and the people who built it described wanting to build a data set that could account for the entire world of objects, something, a data set that represented everything that was in the world. Kind of. And they took these 20,000 objects and they scraped the internet and collected millions and millions and millions of images and then hired you know, online Amazon Turk workers to classify all of them. We're showing a small subset of that collection, which is all pictures of people. When you start classifying people, it gets crazy very quickly. How would you know that that's what that person is by looking at them? You start to develop categories that are not descriptions so much as they are judgments. So in this training set, you find all kinds of examples of racism, misogyny, ableism, sexism. Please call Stella. Ask her to bring these things with her from the store. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five pinch bags. It was possible with the explosion of images on the internet. Um, researchers realized that if you go and you scrape the entire internet and you collect millions of images, that you can find patterns through all of those images. But the data set was created by taking people's Flickr profiles, by taking people's images that they had put on social media or put on the internet, and then taken them and labeled them and built a training set that's designed to go into computer vision systems to try to recognize something about somebody's character. And this, for me, is the most extreme example of a critique that you could leverage against computer vision systems in general. In the last 10 years is a proliferation of these technologies everywhere in, in life, from your phone to the street to schools to workplaces. And I think in many ways we're not ready as a society to really think about the implications of what it is if people are constantly being tracked, interpreted uh, by these technical systems and by systems of power behind them. What kind of world do we want to live in rather than assuming that we should just accept technologies as a given? This is the moment for a very serious critical reflection on what these tools might do to everyday.